Making this much money per month is possible for anyone willing to put an effort push the ego aside and dive deep into being great. This brand started back in really by accident in 2019 with two co-founders who literally knew nothing about business, like absolutely nothing. They grew the brand from scratch, bootstrapped with no debt and built a multi-million dollar company and you can too. So I'm gonna give you the blueprint for this brand's success in four steps. So make sure that you grab something to take notes with because I know you won't be able to remember everything. So number four, website conversion. And I'm gonna bring this up over here on screen because I think it's probably probably the best way to showcase this. The website conversion rate was 2.4% conversion rate. Average order value, big number here, $107, and returning customer rate, 52%. Couple of things here, I really want the conversion rate to be around two to 3%, so this was good. Average order value, over 100 bucks. Really want this one to be about 115, it was 107, so still good. The biggest piece here is 52% returning customer rate. I actually would have liked to see this number a little bit higher, it means we didn't push hard enough on a couple of things that I'm going to talk to you about in later in this video. But my point is that the website is and will be always the most important piece here. If there is not trust on the site, if the site is not fast, if it does not have a good user experience, then it will affect the conversion rate. And more importantly, it will affect the overall sales that you have in the business. Most people try to fix ads, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but the ads are typically not the issue as much as the site being, I would say, congruent or similar to the ads that are being ran. So similar ads to the site. One other thing here that really helped us out is the average order value. So we didn't do this just by people like, I would say generally going through the site and be like, yeah, I wanna order $100 of product. Most of the average product prices are anywhere between 60 to $80. So they buy multiple pieces. So what do we do? We use tools like Vitals or Zipify. There's also some stuff out there like Vanga. Those are the, the first two are kind of the ones I would go after that allow you to bundle and get these products into one spot and so that is what we did so these bundling apps really helped increase our average order value returning customer rate as i mentioned i really would love for this to be a 60 40 40 percent new customers 60 percent returning our conversion rate actually would have went up it would have cost us less money and we probably could have done 320 330 340 instead of the 310 so i'm just telling you that that the 310 great number the area to get that returning customer rate up is actually number three so this is the email and sms marketing we were sending out three emails per week we probably during this period since we were doing kind of a push throughout we should have done four emails per week or three emails one week for one week and we only did two SMSs per week on average we probably should have pushed that up to three or four SMS my general advice is to send one to two SMS per week but again we were pushing hard we were not focused as much on profit which I will actually get in here and we'll jump in to show you the real numbers of where we were at for every dollar that we spent profit wise we're actually in a pretty good spot but we were not worried about profit as much we were actually trying to scale so we should have done two more SMSs per week on average and that would have helped the returning customer rate and would have gotten us another thirty thousand plus dollars and ultimately grew a little bit faster so a couple of things we would have done um, and things that we're implementing for September there's always opportunity to grow the other thing is retention I'll go to the site here just so you know what it is there's also a uh, link in the description down below retention uh, basically it's legal but seems illegal if you want to go to a speakeasy it's like the the after party that nobody really tells you about retention is a very cool powerful software what it allows us to do is collect more emails and phone numbers from people who would have been to the site but never gave us their email or phone number turns out without getting into legal jargon the United States even California is an opt-out state not an opt-in state throughout the United States so go check it out they have a whole space on here about their legal actions and you can see if it makes sense for you but it was a big game changer for us we added a lot of emails and SMS and that is what attributed to a ton of sales I actually pull up total sales here and you can actually see where we were at I think it was around 20 to 30 percent I really want this to be just so you know email and SMS combined also with like postcards I want that to be around 30% actual attributed revenue from email and SMS again it's a little over attributed they like to just bloat their numbers a little bit it's actually saying 105 thousand is 34 percent i actually want that number to be a little bit lower it actually was a little bit lower but this is the bloated numbers from inside of clavio so it gives you kind of a ballpark um, explanation of like what's actually happening the reason that these numbers aren't exactly accurate is and you'll see whenever we look at triple well here in a little bit is that um, we did email through clavio and sms through attentive 
which we do not suggest. However, the client was already kind of locked into a long-term contract and it was just a headache to try to do. So we did some custom coding and connected the two of them to automatically make it work for something like retention. So if you can just go directly to Clavio or try something else. I, I already told Attentive because uh, they were not nice to us. So I'm not going to re recommend them. So if you don't like Attentive, find somebody else like Clavio or Postscript. I don't get paid to tell you that. I get paid to tell you that um, the best options out there are not ones that uh, are paying us, but are ones that are actually working. And um, I just have not had a good experience with the So side note there, but I want you to be aware of the best options for you. 34%, it was roughly about 29, 30% to overall revenue. But that is what generated a good chunk here. I will tell you that there is a lot of you people that I have talked to. I mean, I think at this point there's been thousands and we have people who have talked to lots of clothing brands. So we've talked to thousands of clothing brands at this point. A good chunk of you guys have a small email list or a medium-sized email list but you just don't ever talk to them enough you are leaving money on the table this is your reminder don't leave this money on the table actually go out and collect the money and it's done through email and sms that's where your profits at all right so i'm going to share with you what we did inside of ads manager but honestly real quick i just want to say howdy my name is aaron I haven't done this for a while but alongside my business partner christian we started this company to help build clothing brands back in 2015. If you're trying to grow a clothing brand and need personalized help, you can schedule a free strategy session by clicking the link down in the description below. There are literally limited spots. As of right now, we are booked out quite a bit of ways. We are trying to fix that, but make sure you go check the link down in the description below. All right, so number two is Facebook, Instagram, Google, and TikTok, or we will just call this paid traffic. All right, so let me explain to you this strategy first, and then this will all start to make a little bit of sense as I pull this up on the screen. And I'll just pull up Triple Well right now so you guys can get an idea. If you don't know about triple whale we do have a link in the description you can check it out it's they have new pricing options so if you looked at it before and you're like i don't want to pay 300 bucks they have an option for like 100 bucks so definitely go check that out and i'll explain a little bit more about what that actually does here in a second but ultimately it is a dashboard or as they say like the e-com operating system so all of your numbers all of your attribution in one spot. Let's go back to the strategy here. So TikTok is our top of the funnel awareness. We are not looking for that to be conversions. Now, I would tell you that this brand should absolutely be posting more on TikTok. I think we can get a ton of awareness. I think we can get even more reach. They're just not doing it. They don't have the time right now, the bandwidth to do it. They're building out the team even more. TikTok is our top of the funnel. We're not really looking at that as a conversion. We're looking at it as awareness to get them to either be remarketed back on Facebook or Instagram or eventually to go Google the brand. So TikTok, awareness, Facebook and Instagram, also cheap eyeballs, but potentially make some conversions. And then those drive searches to Google and then we convert even better on Google. So it is a funnel and it does look like this. Google is more expensive, but we do get a better return. The cost to acquire a customer is better on Google, but if they saw us on TikTok first, does that get attributed? It was If they saw it on Facebook or Instagram, did that get attributed? All questions you should be asking, but this is the funnel that we created for this brand that has helped us basically pick up a lot of the slack and all of the loose ends where people didn't make the purchase initially on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram. Okay, so our Facebook and Instagram ads work because we aligned a great offer. It was a very solid offer. It was a, it, we all tell you right now, I don't really suggest this, but it was a discount and it was around some hype. You do not need to make it around hype. You could say, look, it's Labor Day. You could say it's National Taco Day. You could say it's National Cookie Day. It doesn't matter. Your brand does not have to even be aligned with it. You don't need a reason to have a great offer. But people are more likely to take an offer. I can't remember what the stats are, but people are more likely to take action on an offer when you make up a reason for it. If it's a moving sale, cool, it's a moving sale versus it's a site-wide sale and there's no reason behind it, probably not gonna do as well. That's the one thing. We had a solid offer. We had great creative that also spoke to the audience. It was super simple. I mean, literally we're, we're selling products here where it was just showing exactly what the product was. And then it had some catchy beat. If it had music, it had some good cuts. And then ultimately we had some images that just showed off the product. That was it. And I know I'm doing a lot of things where I'm telling you like, hey, shit, comment below or whatever else. But I promise you, uh, we did create a link of like all of our best creative into swipe files and it's on foreplay. You guys should go check them out. But um, you can just comment the word foreplay down below and I'll send you a link of all of our best creative and that will be a little bit easier for you to go and just browse through on how to mimic or copy or innovate. Remember, steal like an artist. Okay, so one key factor for Facebook ads that people do not talk about is that once you find a winning ad, let it run for a long period of time. The key for Facebook ads is finding the winning combination and letting it run, like I said, for a long period of time. Most people make the mistake of getting a good ad created, right? They, so they spend a lot of time creating that ad and then killing it before they ever give it a chance to learn and get the sales to be successful. 
successful. So if you're spending 20, 50, 60, $100 a day, and then you turn off the ad after three days, Facebook never had a chance to be successful. And you could have had a winner right there that would have completely taken off. So there is no magic number on how long you should run the ad, but whatever it is, push it farther than what you're thinking. Cause the two to three days, not a good option. Minimum I would look at it as like 10 day window. In this 10 days, did it improve or is it going down? If it's dying, then just kill it and go find something new. But please don't cut it off after three days. It is very difficult to see because we never really get a chance to actually gauge whether the ad was successful or not because it's cut off too early. Let me show you inside of Tripwell real quick and I can give you the story behind the paid ads real quickly. So new subscribed, our return on ad spend was 59. That was awesome. New customer ROAS was 22. Profitability was pretty high. Our blended cost per acquisition was two bucks. New customer acquisition was $5. Looks like great numbers here. Okay. I'm not denying that at all. These are like astronomically good numbers. Um, you are not going to get them all of the time. But what's gonna load here is the pixel, and this is our paid traffic. Something that we don't really talk about a lot, but I think I'm going to do a video on, you should check it out in the future, is our blended return on ad spend. Meaning for every dollar that I spend, how much do I make in return? I don't care how much it is on ads, but I do care about how it is across the board, across organic, UGC, influencers. How much did I spend to get the ROI in the business? Right here, organic and social, we had um, this is also linear all, which means that like it's giving a small percentage based off of like where the sale actually came from. Um, as you can see here, Facebook had $57,000 um, in conversion value, said we had a 0.7. Um, if we actually switch this to do like tri triple attribution, which means that it like counts if anybody saw the ad, we're at a 1.6 total return is a 9.5, but I like to actually do it where I give smaller credits to where people found um, the ad and or where they saw something. And so then we can actually see the return for the actual brand as a whole, like where did it happen? So organic, we had 1200 purchases, Organic could be stories, could be Facebook, could be Instagram, could be TikTok organic, doesn't matter. What you'll see a lot of these purchases too is that there is overlap between Facebook and Klaviyo and Attentive and wherever else, which is why I'm like, look, we're just looking at a blended return. How much do we spend? How much do we make? Which I'll show you here in a second. But Facebook was at a 0.7. Some would say that's really, really low. Well, it, it, it is, absolutely it is but it's not the true full picture here because Facebook reached a lot of people to get them into our ecosystem to actually make the, the sales happen. So Clavio, we had 332 purchases. Attentive, remember that's where we use for our SMS. Do not like them, 206. Google ads, we had a three on return here, 58 purchases. TikTok, we had a 0.07. Again, TikTok, we're running just a strain awareness play. Um, 1.2 purchases. That is what has shown throughout the dashboard here is that we spent 87,000, we made 272. Obviously a good chunk of this isn't attributed. So we actually have to look back up here and what's our real return. So total revenue was $310,000, 372. Um, total ad spend across Facebook. Oops, says we spent zero. I don't know why that's doing that. All right, so I don't know why Facebook isn't telling us the total ad spend or the return on ad spend or anything like that, but I'm just gonna go off of the total number here, which is how much do we spend in ads? We spent 87,000, we made 310,000. That is a 3.56 blended return. Now, now, if I'm being honest, we really want to be, as we're scaling up, we want to be around that four to, like if we're scaling around a three to, I would say three and a half to four and a half is a good spot. If we're not scaling, we're trying to maintain and do incremental growth each month, then five, six, seven is really one of where I want to be at. Now, 3.5, that's great. That means for every dollar we spent, we made three and a half dollars. Um, and so not too bad when you're spending uh, that chunk of money and we got $310,000 back. Overall, if these numbers were showing on here with Facebook, we did spend a good chunk amount of uh, dollars on Facebook. Uh, it says here we spent 82,000 of our 87. We did jump into Google a little bit later because we were having some issues with verification um, where I think that number could have been a little bit higher. This is just the ad side of things. I would tell you that what makes the ads work, what makes the business work is the storytelling. So that is number one here. The storytelling, the key for building a brand comes down to being able to tell a good enough story. Everything else I mentioned will help you generate revenue 
and honestly, you could probably do pretty well. Maybe you can make it to a seven figure business. Maybe you can make it to a $500,000 a year business, but it will not be complete without your ability to create a story that draws people in to let them be a part of the community. So let me explain. This brand is the perfect American success story where they started from nothing and built something amazing for their families, to provide for their employees, and have fun doing what they want on their own terms. A few things that they did that were helpful for storytelling that were also tactical that you can use. One, they use other people's audiences to get attention and eyeballs. What I mean by that is they did a lot of influencer out reach and then they found the best influencers for them partnered with them and created collabs got a lot of attention took a lot of those other people's eyeballs told their story and then created awareness they gave back to their community and causes that they support who does not give back to things that they support when they have money literally goes back to the eight old adage of if you are part of a church most people give money to their church if they have it because that's something that they believe in if they have a kid on a sports team if they believe in the sports team they're going to give money so if you have something that you believe in tell people about that create that community because there is a good chunk of people who actually believe in that cause and want to support you as well so when you do those things it helps them draw you into a story now the last piece here is that they show up each and every day on instagram stories and share their insight into their lives people feel like they know them if you feel like you know somebody there's already a level of trust and so when they offer you something then you are much more likely to take action. For those of you who've been watching this channel for a while, you know that if I'm suggesting brands that I'm literally telling you to go check out, it's because I have used them, they have worked for people we've worked with, they have worked and made actual money, and hopefully you've watched this video and be like, hey, this guy, he's not trying to blow smoke up my bootie. I have a three-year-old, so we try to use different words here, but I'm not here to tell you a bunch, bunch of stuff. I want you to come back and watch these videos because it's a lot of fun for us to do it. It's more fun whenever we can reach more people. It does us no good if I send you off to a, a site that doesn't actually help you grow. When you can provide value to somebody and there's a level of trust, then they get drawn into that story and that's exactly what they did. Your job is to create an appealing enough story to draw people in and then follow the first three steps that I just mentioned. Those are important to be successful with your business. And if you want to know exactly how we set up the ads for these types of brands, literally step by step, make sure to go watch this video right here next. You all have a great rest of your day. We will see you in the next video and PS, make sure you subscribe.